Those of you who are longtime fans of the show will know that every year I make a New Year's Eve noisemaker. This was last year's. I also made a train whistle, but I can't find it. Oh, wait, I didn't make that. And the first one I made. right now. <laughs> this year I've got something not quite as loud, it's a whistle. It's like a policeman's whistle or a referee's whistle. Big shout out goes to Carmen Salamone who came up with the idea for this. He also came up with the idea of the marshmallow crossbow shooter which was one of the most popular projects of this entire year. Thank you so much Carmen, I love your ideas. I did something this week I rarely do. I made a bunch of prototypes. <laughs> These are my earlier attempts leading up to the final version that works out really well. So if you download my free plans, they'll look something like this. And if you make your cuts as accurately as possible, you should have pretty good results. But the the best part about this project is that it takes just the tiniest bit of scrap lumber. Start by roughly cutting out these two shapes. Use spray adhesive to stick these on. I'll put this one on my 3 quarter inch piece of cherry. And I'll stick this one to this real thin piece of walnut. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. I'm sticking these two pieces together using double sided tape. I'm going to use a 7 8 inch Forstner bit in my drill press to drill out the center hole. You'll notice that hole is off center. I'm going to cut the inner part first, sticking as close to the lines as possible. I don't need to cut these two thin boards as accurately as the other one. In fact, I'm going to cut it a little oversized. I could pry apart these two pieces. And I can peel off that template. On my disc sander, I want to try to flatten out this surface and this surface, making this top piece a little bit thinner, and I want to try to taper this top section down a little bit more. I found that the best way to put this all together is to glue up the shell first, let that dry before putting on this top piece. The other thing I found that's helpful is when lining this up, line up this bottom piece to this bottom piece, then you have plenty of room to cut the top down and to position this piece. This is a quarter inch diameter wood bead that I picked up at a craft and hobby store. I'll give that about an hour to dry. One hour. So now I can glue this piece in and if it's a little bit too tight from the way you've clamped this, just shave a little bit off of here by sanding it. This time this one seems to fit just snug enough. One thing also I wanted to point out is that when I cut this piece here, I cut it at this angle. What I want to do is, I found it works out a lot better if I flip it around to where it goes this way and like that. Then what you need to do is just play around with the opening on this side, the opening on this side, and the distance between these two. You want this piece to line up with this piece as it comes around the top. And I found that if you have a large opening on this side and a smaller opening on this side, sometimes that helps. As long as you have a fairly snug fit to this piece, you could just kind of play around with it and get it to fit before gluing it in. Regular wood glue gives me plenty of time to position this before it dries. I'll just keep positioning this until it sounds good. 
Sometimes you get the sound, but you don't get the ball running right. It helps if you don't mind the taste of glue. Perfect! <laughs> now I've got that, I could clamp it up. Here you can see how I've got this piece sloping down a little bit. The mouth opening is wider than the opening over here. The two things to experiment with are how far down this piece goes and the width of this gap. Both of those elements combined determine whether it's going to make a good whistle tone and whether the ball is going to spin inside of it. Well, that's all dry. <laughs> Sounds really good, I just need to shape it up a little. I'll finish this one with some spray lacquer. This week on my audible.com book corner, I wanna talk a little bit about free. I just got through listening to Free, The Future of a Radical Price, and yes, the book itself is free. Chris Anderson points out how businesses stuck in the 20th century using pay for service models on the internet are destined to dwindle as the supply of information becomes more and more abundant. There's little need for antiquated paywalls when consumers have access to the same information at no cost. The funny thing is is that free is a powerful money generating economic model. Look at Google, it freely gives away almost all of its services, yet is wildly profitable. It's an enlightening book. Audible.com has over 100,000 titles and you can pick out any one of those for free just by going to audible.com slash woodworking. Remember, audible.com is one of the ways I am able to earn an income and keep woodworking for mere mortals free to everyone. Well, I'm really pleased with the way the whistle turned out. I hope you give it a shot. The plans are pretty accurate if you follow them really closely, but you'll still probably want to use some inexpensive wood and do a couple of practice runs. And that's my final video of the year. I'm taking next week off, so I'll see you in two weeks. This year, I'm gonna have my year-in roundup episode on my second channel, Mere Minutes. So if you're not already subscribed to that channel, do so now, and then you'll get notified when that video comes out, probably in a week or so. I want to thank all of you for supporting Woodworking for Mere Mortals throughout the entire year. Without your support, I probably wouldn't have been able to come out with a new video and project every single week. <laughs> it's going to feel good to take a break next week. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And thanks once again to Carmen for the whistle idea. I'll see you in a couple of weeks.